Are you okay? I'm in a, I'm in a lot of pain. Okay, what happened? Uh, the other car ran the red light as we were going through. How you doing? Are you injured at all? I had the wind knocked out of me, but I think I'm okay. Noah Antweiler, also known as the Spoonie One, or simply Spoonie, was born in St. Louis, Missouri, in 27th of December, 1980. He is an actor, a film and script writer, producer, and perhaps still best known for his portrayal of the Spoonie One in the comedy series known as The Spoonie Experiment, which aired from 2007 to 2016 and was created by Noah himself, who starred in it alongside Benjamin Daniel and Louis Laval. It follows a gamer as he's reviewing video games and movies, and the series aired eight seasons before ending. Noah hasn't been active in the film industry since 2016, which is why some people believe him to be dead. However, he's still alive and well, but according to the internet, people nowadays believe him to be boring and are paying little to no attention to what he does. Early life, siblings, and education. Noah was raised in St. Louis alongside his brother Miles by their parents about whom little to nothing is known as the boys respect the privacy of their parents. Noah had many problems growing up as he had sudden moon changes and was subsequently diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder only in his late teens. He then also developed vasodepressor syncope, a heart disease and two conditions combined to have contributed to Noah's strange behavior, quoted by some on the internet. He grew up spending most of his spare time playing video games, but was still focused on his education and thus upon matriculating into 1998, Noah enrolled at Arizona State College. He was also into sports, acting, video games, and while there, and in 2002, Noah graduated with his bachelor's degree in computer science. Roles in TV series, Noah worked various jobs for the following seven years before launching his own quote-unquote TV slash YouTube career, making his debut series appearance in The Spoonie Experiment in 2007, and in 2009 reprised his role in the two comedy series Stalter Critic and Mars Girl Reviews. He spent around four years creating content for Channel Awesome, but after he started tweeting strange jokes about having a girl in his basement and having his penis cut off, he was either fired or quit Channel Awesome, but Channel Awesome themselves have not commented on the exact reason. While still with them, Noah had appeared in four episodes of the short comedy Sage Reviews, seven episodes of the comedy It Came From Beyond Midnight, and three episodes of the comedy The Nostalgia Chick. In the year 2013, he was heard him voice Little Joey in the episode of Carter's Alley of the animated comedy Game Boys, the animated series. In the following year, heard him voice Mr. Trinket in the episode Newcastle of the comedy The Reviewers. Between 2009 and 2015, Noah played the Spoonie One, Turl, Dr. Insano, and several other characters in the comedy talk show Nostalgia Critic. A show created by Doug Walker follows Doug as he's reviewing TV shows and movies. Noah's most recent role in a TV series has been his portrayal in 2016 of The Spoonie One and Dr. Insano in an episode of Atop the Fourth Wall, the movie Part One of the science fiction comedy Atop the Fourth Wall. Roles in movies. He made his debut film appearance in 2010 when he portrayed Dr. Insano and the Spoonie One in the action comedy Kickassia, and the following years heard him voice a character in the comedy Press Start to Continue, starring as Dr. Insano in the short horror comedy The Human Spider First Sequence, and play as the Spoonie One in the adventure fantasy comedy known as Suburban Nights. Noah starred in the short horror comedy The Human Spider 2, full sequence, 
and a couple of his following roles were in the horror crime comedy The Cinema Snob Movie and the action adventure To Boldly Flee. Both in 2012 and 2015, science fiction comedy thriller Atop the Fourth Wall, The Movie. His final appearance before disappearing from YouTube entirely was to be in the 2016 horror comedy Shot on Shitio. However, although completed, the movie has not been released to this day. Writing, directing, and producing credits are as follows. Noah has written 10, produced 6, and directed 4 movies and TV series. Some of the most notable amongst these, which he wrote, produced, and directed all by himself, include an episode of the series Sage Reviews, an episode of the series Bad Movie Beatdown, and 110 episodes of the series known as The Spoonie Experiment. His other credits include Noah receiving 12 special thanks for the series Nostalgia Critic and Bad Movie Beatdown as well as The Cinema Snob. He has made a guest appearance in a couple of talk shows including Brad Tries, Panda Q&A, and James and Mike Mondays. Awards and nominations include Noah winning a Mashable Open Web Award for Funniest Person in 2009. As far as his love life and girlfriends are concerned, in October 2008, Noah began dating the gamer and social media star Scarlett after the two had met over the internet. They began collaborating as she became familiar with his content, and as a Christmas gift, Scarlett redesigned Noah's website and helped with advertising his shows. She eventually became a makeup artist and a camera operator for The Spoonie Experiment, but in February 2011, the two broke up for unknown reasons. Sometime in the second half of 2010, Noah began dating the girl known on the internet as April Von Lahn. They often made videos together, and it seemed that their fans were fond of them both. But in 2019, Noah revealed without explanation that April had left him and that he had lost his house. As of June 2021, Noah seems to be single, hasn't married, and does not have children. His hobbies and interests include being a huge fan of the science fiction comedy series Mystery Science Theater 3000, which aired from 1988 to 1999. He's also a fan of the 1986 action movie known as Big Trouble in Little China. Noah's favorite actor is Reb Brown, and some of his favorite movies which star Reb are Captain America, Robo War and Strike Commando. The two film producers he admires the most are J. Michael Straczynski and Warren Ellis. Noah is somewhat addicted to video games and his favorite are role-playing games such as The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, and Dark Souls. As far as his age, height, and net worth, Noah is currently 40 years old. He has long brown hair, light blue eyes, his height is 5 foot 10 and he weighs roughly 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. As of June 2021, his estimated worth was $50,000, although as of now, that would most likely be debated, as Noah's entire career has started to fall apart. As you've probably figured out by now, most of my fall of videos begin with stated facts that are known via a biography online. But from here, I like to go off base and off script to explain to you not just my connection to the creator, but where the creator is now. I remember first watching Noah Antweiler on The Spoonie Experiment when he did a playthrough of Phantasmagoria 2, Puzzles of the Flesh. I remember this being one of the best and most comedic playthroughs I had ever seen, and I think still to this day it would hold up. Nonetheless, over time we did slowly watch Noah and his life completely fall apart. It started out slowly with a build-up or what I call the trampoline effect. The trampoline effect is when someone's career on YouTube takes a giant leap. Hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of people subscribe to the channel. 
Noah himself only reached about 110,000, and I think he topped out at about 115,000 subscribers. Although at this point, I think that's dipped somewhere below 100,000, possibly. But at that time, he started to make reviews, which became less and less frequent. In turn, he also started to display a new show called Rassle Rassle, which was not very popular and did not make much sense to any of us who did not follow wrestle closely. It was about pro wrestling, the stories that were intertwined, and it was completely off script. It did not do very well, and I think Noah was somewhat disappointed with how the show was received, although it was so esoteric to the actual show itself, I'm unsure why he didn't understand that people wouldn't be as excited about this show. His other show that did somewhat okay was his Counter Monkey show. These were pretty funny stories for any of you who've played role-playing games or been a dungeon master or game master of role-playing games, but outside of that situation, it would be very difficult to understand these, once again, very esoteric situations of being an RP tabletop role-player. Other than that, he started to do shows about reviewing video games, which one of his first were Bayou Billy. It was a very old NES, Nintendo Entertainment System game, which was extremely difficult and poorly made. His review of this was great and really launched his career, and over time he started to get into obscure movies, which, while okay, were also kind of off topic as most people had not seen these. His reviews for the most part were extremely funny, talented, and well-made, especially for the time where not many people had editing equipment. We did not have iMovies, we did not have Pro Movie Maker or Final Cut Pro or Sony Vegas, and still, he was adding all different types of effects to his movies, making them stand out from most reviewers at the time. But you're not exactly here for an entire biography of this man's life. What you're here for is the downfall. So what inevitably happened that created a downfall for Noah Antweiler, AKA the Spoonie One? There are numerous videos that chronicle the downfall of Spoonie, so I'll give you a brief synopsis. After joining with Channel Awesome in the early 2010s, his content and output never truly recovered. And after being unceremoniously ousted after an infamous tweet to one of his female coworkers, Noah seemed to meander willingly into obscurity. The post that got him the most hate was when he posted to Jesu Otaku about her recent breakup with her boyfriend at the time, saying, you know, if things don't work out with you in Nash 076, I'll be happy to chain you to a pipe in my basement and love you my way. Although this comment didn't immediately get him backlash on Twitter, it was later when he angered one of the members of Channel Awesome, known as Obscurus Lupa, who brought this comment back up. This comment initiated a talk between him and Channel Awesome in which they asked why he would possibly be mentioning stuff like this on their business account. In turn, Spoonie said that he'll talk however he wants and parted ways with Channel Awesome, leading to his own career. During that time, one of the ex-members of Channel Awesome, known as Lord Cat, made a commentary talking about how life was with Spoonie and how hard it was to deal with him on set. I've worked with Noah before, just like I've worked with many people with that guy with the glasses. I've had a lot of respect for people with that guy with the glasses. Um, and... I no longer respect Noah Antweiler. I used to respect him because I felt he put a lot of work into his videos. The man is possibly the single largest waste of talent I've seen in a very long time. And I am sitting here today telling you, Noah Antweiler, you need to give up. You are the second most loathsome person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. You shit all over your fans. And then you shit on my fans. You think you're something, but you're a fucking nobody. You live out there in your fucking desert in the middle of nowhere, proclaiming you're going to be this fucking actor somewhere, and you're too much of a bitch to move out to L.A. and follow your dreams. 
You're too much of a fucking pussy. You're a fucking coward. You're a loser. You're a loser. You want to know why Scarlet left you? Because you're a fucking loser. You're lame. You got a small dick and you're fucking afraid of it. How about you act like a professional for once? You fucking retard. He also blames Noah for ruining career opportunities for him. But I think it's time the whole world, Spoonie, heard just how much of a fucking idiot you truly are. You and that other idiot, Joe. When you were at E3 that one year, and you decided to go up and down the hallways screaming about XCOM's betrayal, and Joe decided to ask people, can I choke you on camera? Yeah. And the guy so, was there playing it real time. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, I saw the footage, and there was one word searing through my mind like, like bolts of fire. And that word, betrayal! What? Betrayal! Betrayed me! This game sucks! It is nothing to do with XCOM! Nothing! Nothing! I think this is the birth of an uh, angry Spoonie. <laughs> nothing to do with XCOM! Like, the first thing they did, they were like, okay, here's XCOM, I'm and not, it's gonna... I'm not with him. <laughs> it's got aliens, and it's like, it's so... Guess what happened, Spoonie? Guess what fucking happened? The whole gaming industry turned its back on me. Not you, not Joe, not Blistered Thumbs, me. I went to GDC the following year, Spoonie. I went to GDC the following year, and I had a chance to interview Notch, Mojang, Specifications, Minecraft. Had a chance. A fucking chance. He was hot then. That was going to be huge for this week in games. That was going to be huge for the stream. It was going to be amazing. And you know what happened? The representative at Mojang caught wind that we were going to interview Notch. And he stepped in. And he said, oh, I've heard of you. You're with that guy with the glasses. You're with Blister Thumbs. And I tried to tell them, no, I'm not. But he said my name was associated with them. And he heard what you did. Making a fucking jackass of yourself at E3. You fucking moron. So they shot it down. And then word spread at GDC. Oh, I heard about you. You were the guy at E3. They thought I was the guy at E3 making a jackass of everyone. I was there trying to be a legitimate member of the business of the gaming industry, and I've worked my ass off to separate myself from you. Every time. You just don't get it. Every single fucking time. You act like a complete fucking jackass. It has repercussions for everyone you're associated with, and you don't give Although a shit. Although at first it seemed as though Spoonie would not be making any comment as to why he parted ways with Channel Awesome, a.k.a. That guy with the glasses, he did finally speak about both his part with the channel and the crew, as well as problems that he had with not only being on their channel and website, but dealing with their politics as well. I suppose that I should uh, address the pink elephant in the room by talking about my departure from Channel Awesome, something that uh, has been kept mostly under wraps most because there were some bad situations that, that stemmed from it. Uh, it the, people kind of settled on the theory that Lupa got me fired somehow for making a joke on Twitter. I, I handled it very poorly. Knowing me, I'm the kind of guy who likes to touch raw nerves, and so naturally I started poking sticks at you know Lupa, so to speak. That was not what got me quote-unquote fired, and it didn't really stem you know, my departure. It wasn't any... It wasn't like that. It didn't help, but that wasn't why. I guess the first thing I would talk about is there, there's kind of a financial aspect to this. And, and in many ways, I just didn't need Channel Awesome anymore. I, I just didn't. Uh, in the sense that it was a really one-sided relationship, but also on another respect. Their website uh, is so poorly designed. It really is atro atrocious. My videos are so buried beneath a nest of, you know, layered, rooted menus that if you wanted to find my stuff, I think I'm under, like, blistered thumbs, side critics, and, like, I'm, I'm so far buried, you can't see what I'm doing. And I'm one of the more popular guys on that side, or I was. And the reason there were hurt feelings was because of the nut, nutso in, uh, situation on Twitter, where I really did start acting like a bastard and started, like, really slacking people online. 
you know, you just you, you can't go doing that and not expect repercussions. And so, you know, that kind of spurred the discussion on where I wanted to go and how how much I was willing to. Basically, they talked to me and they said, you know, you're you can't go. You can't, you know, you can't be this way on online. And I go, why? And I go, why? You know, I, I can say what I want. And so that was my being a bitch. But they were like, you know, you represent the company now. And we can't have somebody representing the company if they're going to act like this. And I go, fair enough. You know, I, say, I said, fair enough. I want to be me. I want to say what I want to say, even if that shit is offensive. And so, you know, even even the situation with Lupa, I it was the kind of thing where I... I I wasn't really sorry for what I said. I, I was sorry the situation turned so ugly, but, you know, it wasn't even the kind of joke that everyone thought it was the kind of joke. But even so, if it was inappropriate, so what? You know, it, it's not the... I, I, there was a fair amount of... At first, this seemed like kind of a start of a downfall for Spoonie. But what kind of kept them together at the same time was the fact that he opened his own Patreon. During this time, he charged anywhere from 10 to $50 for things such as a signed picture of himself, a voice call from him left on your answering machine, or a small clip of him acting something out for you. His highest donation tier, $100, meant that he would play Cards Against Humanity with you. None of these were actually ever fulfilled, even though they were reaching for a $5,000 a month goal. Surprisingly enough, he did reach the $5,000 a month goal, and he promised to make a movie once he did. After making this goal and promising his movie, he followed through with exactly none of the promises made in his Patreon. To this day, no voice calls have been made, no headshots have been sent out, no small parts have been acted, and he couldn't even get together enough people to play Cards Against Humanity to keep even the $1,000 end of the deal that he had made with over 10 different people donating $100 a month to simply play a game of cards with him. On top of it, his whole collective of $5,000 a month to make the Noah Antweiler aka Spoonie movie never came through either. He actually began to withdraw from the internet at this time as though the pressure of having to create more for money was too much for him. He started to make less and less shows until it trickled down to only being a show called Livewire. This was a very sad attempt at streaming. When we think of game streamers on Twitch today, or even YouTube, we know that they often interact with their audience and often speak almost all the way through the game to give commentary. In turn, Spoonie would yell at his audience anytime they would give him a hint, telling them not to tell him what to do in the game. He also would commonly not speak whatsoever during an entire playthrough of a game merely coughing and clearing his throat, and never finishing an entire series. He would only play about one game a month, and maybe only play about the first chapter of a game, not even finishing entire run-throughs of game, and it was mostly like he had turned the camera on to merely record what he was already going to do that night, and put little to no extra effort into it. This went on for about eight months, until finally it seemed Spoonie completely gave up on all video creation whatsoever. And this man has the balls to tell you that he's working his ass off playing video games and watching movies. The balls, the balls of this fucking statement. <laughs> I mean, fuck, man. If I was this guy, because this is what I, I, I had this dream of being this fucking shit. But as you read this, you realize why it's not actually a dream to be like this person. It's a fucking nightmare. Shit, man. You know, but he's like recognizing like his video output stinks. Well, if you're if you're working your ass off, why can't you put videos out? It's because you're lazy. You know, he's talking about how his ad revenue is in the toilet. Well, it might be because you're not putting out any fucking videos, you moron. As you can probably tell at this point, Noah's fans and Patreons were becoming sick of his non-commitment to making any sort of media whatsoever. Only updating his channel with half playthroughs of games that he barely coughed or even spoke through, 
His newest updates included nothing more than a review of Slimer High C Drink and a half sputtered out drunken review of the new Spider-Man movie, which at this point is ages old. After that, he grew more and more weary of making any type of media whatsoever, yet hounded his fans to understand that he was growing sicker by the day through hypochondriac diagnosed illnesses that he himself most likely thought he had, but never actually went to a doctor to confirm. When he really started to fall apart was during the time that Trump was elected as president. This seemed to really grow the ire of Spoonie as he began to tweet up to a thousand times a month. And when his tweets grew numerous to the point that his fans started to ask him how he had so much time to tweet throughout the day, he got even angrier and despite them opened a second Twitter account pretending to be his own dog and tweeting from the mindset of his dog. A very strange thing to do and possibly a show of how his character was breaking down. One day he finally made a comment on Twitter about wishing he could commit suicide and see how many people he could take out when he did it. Twitter eventually closed his account. This would be the last little bit we would ever hear of Spoonie, up until the point that he was involved in a car accident and also lost his house. Being in the car wreck was something he did not want to reveal to his viewers, but still asked for money and different support on Patreon for paying for his medical bills. On top of it, when it was finally found out that he was the one guilty for actually running a red light and hitting the opposite car on the other end, he denied any responsibility until finally, when cornered, said he did not care what had happened. On the 27th of May, 2019, Antweiler explained that he had recently been involved in a car accident that had broken his ribs. Most relevant, um, I was in a really bad car accident. Uh, I felt fine at first. Um... But I started really hurting later on, which I'm told is actually kind of normal. Like, apparently, like, adrenaline is a hell of a drug. Uh, started feeling really bad, though, a few days later. Uh, it, I went to the hospital. Um, uh, it, I had I had uh, broken ribs. Um, did I finally jump probably ponytail? No. <laughs> Um, I had like two or three broken ribs, um, uh, severe, what do they call it? Severe bruising of the chest wall. Um, that was about it. Um, they thought for some reason I had pneumonia cause I had a really bad cough, but I, that, that, that wasn't true. What Antweiler failed to mention, however, was that he was the one directly responsible for this. A report from the Aurora Police Department judged that he had violated traffic law by running a red light and hitting another car. There is even dash cam footage of the incident. Are you okay? I'm in a, I'm in a lot of pain. Okay, what happened? Uh, the other car ran the red light as we were going through. How you doing? Are you injured at all? I had the wind knocked out of me, but I you think I'm a bag deployment? Yeah. Okay. Do you have your driver's license and insurance? Yes. I witnessed it. I was, I was going to pull the car over there on that side, but okay. I was behind him. Okay. okay. So I don't know if you need me to stick yes, around. Yes, I do. Because... Come here. What happened? Okay, so he, the other the car back there totally ran the light. Okay. It was solid green. He went forward, and that one just came running back. Okay, which way was that car heading? That one was going this way, and he was coming this way. This one right here was going through this way. That way? Yeah, and, and that one was there. And went through the light? Yep. Okay. Okay. Tell me what happened. Okay. I was in the right lane, and I was driving along speed limit. Um, uh, I had the I had the green light. He turned right in front of me. I tried to swerve to the left. He kept coming. I hit him in the front, the the front passenger side. And that's okay. it. I got two witnesses that said you ran the red light. Besides, not even these guys. That's I'm gonna tell you it's not true. I had the green light. Okay. One of them has a dash cam. So. Okay. 
Unfortunately, I'm going to have to write you a ticket for the surveying the traffic light. Did you see the dash cam? Huh? Did you see the dash I'm cam? still going to have to write it. Okay. So, all right, let these guys take care of you, okay? There was a bunch of stuff. I had to go to court. Um, I was cited for the accident, uh, but long story. Um, apparently, for some tickets, you have to go to court. Uh, It was a unique experience. I learned a lot. Antweiler took no accountability for a car crash that could have killed somebody. I don't fucking care. Sadly, the last part of this video ends with Noah at 41 years old, no longer receiving enough money on Patreon, nearly reaching zero. No one would pay anything anymore because he had not made a single video in over eight months, even though people were paying not only for his production, but for him to have items on the set of both his Counter Monkey show and his Main Spoonie experiment show. What you need to understand is that he was funding himself completely through his Patreon and his YouTube, two things he did nothing to work on. Because of this, not only did his girlfriend at the time leave him, and he was unable to start a family or even have his career take off. All of his dreams of becoming a movie star went into the garbage after this, and sadly, Noah could no longer even make mortgage payments, even after his family had floated him large amounts of money to keep doing so. In the end, he ended up losing his house and is now moving back in with his parents. So how do we know Spoonie has been fucking evicted? Well, his home has been listed for sale. His home's been listed for sale on Realtor.com as a short sale. And what this means is that they're actually selling it for less than Spoonie paid. It's an absolute fire sale on Spoonie's home. They're going to take offers way below listing. And that means Spoonie is going to lose his down payment. He's going to lose every month of payments that he paid in. And he's probably years behind on payments also. So he's probably owes fuck so much money that at this point his only option is to fucking declare bankruptcy. But here's the home. It's for fucking sale. It's a short sale. It's in the thumbnail of this video. What the, what the home looked like before he moved in and what it looks like now. So let's zoom in. Let's zoom in to, in 2013, what this home looked like, okay? Here it is, all-American home, four-bedroom, two-bath. Two the lawn's well-manicured. It's well-maintained. Fresh coat of paint on it. Look at it. This is the American dream. This is what Spoonie had. And he had a loving girlfriend who wanted to marry him. He was going to get married and start a family, obviously. You know, if he was buying a four-bedroom home, they probably had a goal of starting a family. All he had to do was keep making videos talking in a camera about movies and video games. All he had to do was do once a month a Cards Against Humanity live stream that he was paid $600 for. Now let's have a look at what it looks like in fucking 2020. Here is the home. Look at the lawn. It's disheveled, fucking grown out. No maintenance done on the yard, just fucking trees growing everywhere. The windows are blacked out. Blacked out windows so that he never has to see the sun again. The paint looks faded, it looks peeling. There's a basketball hoop that's never used. Look at the look at the driveway. There's weeds growing up in the cracks in the driveway. Because he never leaves his fucking house. That's the state of fucking Spoonie's life. But, you know, he's got the fucking balls. The fucking balls to fire up his Amazon wish list at this time. And start begging for shit. For his fucking, you know, place he's moving into in his parents' fucking basement. And do you know what he's fucking begging for? He's begging for blackout curtains so that he can fucking sleep during the day and block out the fucking sun. All right, guys, that 
pretty much ends it for today with Noah moving back home and his career as Spoonie of the Spoonie Experiment no longer happening. I'm talking completely off the record here, so anything I say beyond this point is just my own personal opinion talking. For me, this is one of the saddest downfalls I ever watched due to the fact that I really liked this man's content quite a bit. This is some of the first stuff I ever started to watch on YouTube. And what's really sad about this is that this guy was literally given it all. I know some people see him as only having 110 subscribers is not very much, but the time that he was in, 100,000 subscribers was equal to today's 1 million subscribers. On top of it, reaching $5,000 on your Patreon was an amazing amount of money to be offered at that time. If any of you were making $5,000 a month, you'd probably be very happy with that amount of money at even a job you were working at very hard. What's sad about Noah is that he was given all the things I just listed, yet simply could not make a single show. At the end of the day, I think Noah could have probably only made one video a month and kept most of his Patreon subscribers. In fact, if you go to the Patreon today and still read all about what people were saying to him, most of their comments were that they would be happy with simply one video a month. And the fact that he couldn't even do that shows, I guess, not just that he didn't really have the energy to work anymore, or that maybe his mental illness at the time was crushing him to the point that he could not operate properly. But I think it was also a man who was defeated by his own success. Sometimes I see this within uh, different channels on Twitch or on YouTube, where someone is leaping into a great success and they almost feel guilty or they get imposter syndrome in which they feel like they are not worthy of what they are getting. It becomes so overwhelming that they do not follow through with the tasks involved, even though they don't realize that their audience in general will not judge them if they start to make stuff that does not meet exact quality of what they want. They are usually just happy to see some sort of product come out on their channel no matter what. I've seen this again and again, and it's kind of a really sad thing. I can somewhat understand it, but at the same time, I had a point in my life with my old channel where I had to open a school at the same time that I had had a Patreon started. And because I knew I couldn't run the Patreon and my school at the same time, I immediately shut down the Patreon so that my Patreon subscribers would not be charged even if they forgot that they were subscribe to and paying the Patreon. And I think if Noah had done that too and maybe gotten a part-time job, he could have reopened the Patreon and gotten money again and also just made an income sub from the subscriber count and view count of his YouTube channel. Because if you go and look at his channel now, he's got the subscribers and the view count on his old videos to make quite a bit of money. I know what the income is for a normal YouTuber's and his were in somewhere of the hundreds of thousands to millions, which is enough to live off of. On top of it, I think if he just would have kept up with his Patreon as well, he would have continued to get maybe half the money that he was getting at 5,000. I think for the movie that he was supposed to make, he could have made a really bad movie and people would have still been happy. If you go back and look at some of the movies that he was in, like kick Asia or Free to Run and all the other ones that he was in, he didn't really make anything that was like, you know, 35 millimeter quality film or acting. They made literally like videotape movies on their home cameras that didn't even use things like iPhones at the time, and people were happy with those. He could have done the same thing like his friend Linkara on the top of the fourth wall, who also had his Patreon members pay for him to make a movie, and he made his own really crappy little movie that his viewers were very happy with. I think this is one of the saddest members of that guy with the glasses slash channel awesome because most of them are still going. If you go and check out each individual person's channel, there's people like Angry Joe, whose career has completely blown up. Linkara's still going. Uh, so many people, even Iron Liz, who was a very minor character on Channel Awesome, has her own channel that is still going. 
and they're still pretty happy with what they're creating. I think Noah could have been too, but I think he just let his own pride and anger and sort of hate towards his own fans completely destroy his career. And that's a very sad thing to see when so many of his viewers were behind him 100%. Did any of you ever watch any of Spoonie's videos? If you did, what was your favorite video? In my opinion, I feel like there's a lot of great stories within the Channel Awesome series of where different creators went. And I'd like to follow more of these to catch up with where their careers are now. I would like to also get your opinion on which ones you would like to see how it played out. For example, Ju Wario has a very tragic story and also kind of a disgusting story too that ends very tragically and very oddly at the end, which a lot of horrible stuff was revealed. If you'd like me to cover more like that, let me know. Until next time, I've been the Inksmith. I hope you have a great rest of the day.